So I'll take Indianapolis or for the most part, uh, just kind of lead the conversation on Indianapolis because I, I kind of this is the one that I normally do uh, in terms of the markets report. Um, so I always start over here with, uh, you know, the, the rental price because that's what everybody is concerned with. So the, the dark line here is 2023. This is 2022. So for the most part, Indy's been relatively flat all year and consistently under 2022's numbers and so we're just kind of seeing a little bit more of that in um in october so the average rent for october was 1400 that is down three percent from last month that's a typo there down three percent from last month and then down six percent year over year um what what we are seeing though is a big increase in um inventory so we're at 2111 which is, I think we were looking at the numbers, it's like four or 500 more than May or something, right? Yeah, I thought that was fascinating when we were talking about that earlier and really the massive difference we've had from, I think you were indicating from May into June, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, and just the massive influx we were seeing, not only in Indianapolis, but in a lot of these other sub-markets that we're about ready to discuss, uh, just a, a, a very mass a change, I guess, in, in the currently active homes, which in my opinion will immediately or directly affect some of these other areas that we're going to talk about. So I thought that was, that was really interesting. A lot more inventory on the market is going to absolutely affect your, your average rents and your average. Yeah. And it's, um, it's interesting, um, kind of in a bad way because the, the timing, I mean, we're recording this on uh, early November. You know, inventory typically goes down because uh, volume typically goes down. So it's kind of the worst where volume is probably going to go down and inventory is going up. So um, I think we're maybe time to bust up the tissues already here, Chris, because uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it it's a convergence of... <laughs> Of two bad I knew things, it was coming. No more inventory, less less activity. So, and if you would, Mike, I think if you click, you will be able to get rid of those little boxes down there. Okay, this is what I'm going to focus on a lot during this call, without a doubt. And if you've watched any of our previous market reports, uh, you'll know that I really focus on the average days on market these days because, well, in real time, that's what I am dealing with on a day-to-day basis is we are seeing an expansion on our average days on market, uh, and we need to be in the forefront of that and able to uh, uh, give our owners the advice necessary in order to reduce the average days on market and stay below what we're really seeing in the average days on market. So uh, the Indianapolis market report, we Mike and I had a quick discussion early on, and this is a different market report, I think, than what we were seeing in some of the other ones that we're about ready to get into, right? Yeah. In terms of days so, on the market, you mean? Yeah, yeah, average days on market, and then how also the average rents reflects uh, on the average days uh, on market. Um, yeah, seeing- so in, this one's interesting because in Indy, uh, if you guys have seen the the previous market reports, we've had like horrendous days on the market. I mean, I think back in it was June or July, uh, we had over 120 days on the market. It was just unreal. I mean, that is, that is crazy. Um, so it's a little unusual. I mean, it's great that we are coming back down to reality and these are this is what would be a normal maybe a little bit high um days on the market but it's an improvement from from last year or sorry from last month uh to it's a 13 percent improvement from last month so it's encouraging to see this number go down um uh but it is still 47 which is you know a little bit high that's almost two months a month and a half of of vacancy that feels a little bit more normal than what we saw uh, the past couple of months, it was, you know, 60 days, 90 days, 100 days. I agree. So it's, it's heading in the right direction, which is good. I agree. But also, I, I would feel remiss if we didn't also speak to the unusualness based on just seasonality alone, right? Yeah. I mean, average days on market, you expect those to expand as you get into the colder months, certainly as you get into the holidays, uh, November, December, uh, on just being consistent with year over year market data, you would typically expect those to expand a little bit. And here we are in the Indianapolis market, surprisingly enough, seeing this down 13% month over month. I mean, let's go. I mean, uh, you definitely don't need the tissues for that. Let's hope it continues. Now, uh, my expectation, and I know this is really your your market here that you're you're an expert on, Mike, but I wouldn't expect that to continue uh, in, in the 
next couple of market reports. I wouldn't think so either, just honestly, based on seasonality alone, but then couple that with looking at the number of active homes that are increasing. Yeah, I anticipate, you know, we may have bottomed out on this average days on the market for, for Indy. So good to see, I love it. I love less days on the market, that's great. Just, I'm a little, you know, cautious on it, that's all. Yeah, yeah, and then before we jump over to the next report, let's uh, also kind of, I love, and Mike, this was kind of your idea, I love the sneak peek into what, what we're going to see in the average rents going into next month. So if you look over at the median rental price over time graph, it's giving us a sneak peek. It looks like we're gonna see an average rent continue to decrease uh, next month, which again, seasonality, that's pretty typical. Uh, I would expect we'll see that even in a lot of these submarkets we're about ready to discuss. Uh, but let's hope that the average days on market stays consistent with what we're seeing this month. Although, again, uh, just to reiterate, I, I would expect uh, based on what we're seeing in real time, that will probably expand. All right. You want to jump over to um, maybe just take a, a, a quick uh footnote on average sales price. So we always, you know, want to take a look at this from an investor's point of view and like, you know, how does this play out? Uh, what do the numbers look like uh, to purchase a home if you are still looking to purchase a home? So Indianapolis, I think for me, that's always a bright spot is the affordability, right? Is uh, average sales price. So we cap this at $500,000 because we want to look at it from an investor's point of view. So of the homes that sold in Indianapolis in the month of October, the average sales price was 232, 135 for homes under 500,000. So that's super, super affordable. I mean, there's still a lot of affordable houses in Indianapolis and there's a lot of those that sold them. Almost 900 of those sold last month alone. So there's tons of inventory out there if you are still looking to get into the market. Um, and I would say, honestly, the, the affordability of Indianapolis for rent is also a bright spot. I mean, it's 1400 bucks. When we go to the next slide, what it is, Fishers or something like that, I think it's gonna be over 2000. So, um, you know, that could be a driver too um, of, of demand is just affordability in the Indianapolis market. Absolutely. I mean, if you're at all considering yourself a real estate investor, you're, you're looking at the Indianapolis market, right? It's, it's, uh, I would like to consider it a hint of jib, but it's not very hidden these days. I mean, investors, it's being pushed all over the place because of these numbers right here. It's an affordable market to be a part of. And now, uh, but what I, what I have to mention though, is to see an uptick, although it's only 0.25%, month over month to see that tick up number of homes sold in the Indianapolis market right now. I don't know, and, and I'm not an expert on other markets, right, other than the one that we're currently involved in, but I would be surprised if we're seeing any any bit of an uptick in number of homes sold in many other markets right now. So uh, to me, that says something about the Indianapolis market, especially in this in investor uh, point of view.